kill him. That will be followed by Follow that by doing covering the best of our ability. And uh, then conclude with another paragraph of the hill of the Kaddish Kosovo. <coughs> Ramalos, Mimama Kinkra, Sipa, I don't know. Yano, Zeva Kashuvos, the Kotak Noi, Mabonos, Tishmoyo, I don't know me, Amod, in Pasi, Hol Matibore, Gisi Adina, Gisonashi, Bolivaro, Pasi, Nashi Adina, Misham Laboke, Shomim Laboke. The hell you saw the Ladinoi, Kimadina Yachesed, Rabin of Dos, who you've done to swell the Kolabonoso. We gathered morning to see immediate family, close friend, to give a final couple to Eliezer Shmuel Ben Ariolay. These are unusual circumstances. This is not the way any has envisioned the way the Levaya of Les Ackman would take place. As was said just before, with the amount of people whose lives Lester touch, you know that. A Levaya for Lester would have filled the entire shul. He was an incredible individual with unusual abilities and talents. I was just thinking, again, this is again it's the month of Nisan, it's Isruchag. The Spadim are not permitted on this day which is also very, very difficult because there's so much to say about Lester, so much. I'm going to tell you personally, personally, my family has an incredible amount of Hakara Sato. He was the kind of person that cared about everyone. And he wanted everybody to succeed whether it was getting the proper education so that they could go on to have a profession and earn a livelihood, whether it was Shidduchim, whether it was Parnasa, Lester, beyond his intellectual capabilities and his academic successes, was a human being with tremendous, tremendous feelings for other people. How often I would come into the shul and the first thing that Dr. Eckman would ask me would be, what's going on with your sons? How are they doing? He really, really cared. And when my sons would come into shul, he would go up to them and ask them, what's going on? What are you up to? Such a personal, personal feeling for every Jew. It was incredible. There's so much more frustrating not to be able to say more. But let, at this time, we'll I'm going to turn it over to the sons who want to share their thoughts and feelings and to give the cover to their father. Very unusual way as a rabbi referenced. Remember, <laughs> a truly remarkable person who had a major impact on so many people, major influence on so many people and touched their lives. Whether it was through his teachings, his writings, as an educator, or as a shadchan. 
he touched people in such a such a deep way. My father never saw covered. He was not interested in covered. He was such an honor. This type of ceremony and burial, although it's unusual, will not have bothered him. But we have to understand what type of person he no longer has. <laughs> we have to understand <laughs> what we've lost. Yesterday, Naftali was read a chutz laaretz from from Yirmiyahu. It talks about a period in the future, post and cherev, when the Jews again would be able to rise in the glory of Hashem will reside in Yerushalayim. Some say this refers to the time of Chizkiyahu. Other times it talks about Zman, the time of the Mashiach. The Navi writes, by and a shoot shall spring forth from the stem of Yishai, and a twig shall sprout from his roots. And then describing this person, he says, Ruach Hashem, Ruach Chachma, Upina, Ruach Eitza, Ubura, Ruach Dat, Bayerat Hashem. Ruach Chachma is, is, is translated as knowing clearly what one learned, remembering it at, at any time. We have to understand my father had a photographic memory. He's not in detail, he did not remember. He can recount every single grade. Myself, Ari and Benjamin grade, probably from fourth grade. We're talking 30, 35 years ago. Every detail, every friend that we knew through college, through high school, and beyond, medical school, whatever it was, he he he, he knew. Maybe they didn't know the name of every single practice, every every single detail. Ruch Eitzel Gura Ubina, the ability to make deductions from material learned. My father was a bro, was able, was what we call a problem solver. He was able to take information and from deductions and his analysis, be able to analyze the situation and be able to come up with an explanation and a solution. Ruch Eitzel Gura, knowledge of fluency and matters of ethics and social behavior. My father was a brilliant man, a remarkable individual. Besides the attributes I just described. My father was a man with many abilities and many talents and many cats and many, and many heads. First and foremost, he was a survivor. He survived the horror of the Holocaust and Stalin. And he came to America, a self-made a self man. He came in the eighth grade, not knowing a word of English. English, he was taught was his fifth language. He already knew Yiddish and Russian, and Hebrew, and German. And he graduated number one from Chelsea High School, earning a full scholarship to Boston University. Subsequently went on to earn seven academic degrees, and wrote 10 books. In 1982, he developed a brain tumor. A very, very difficult period in our lives. We were all much younger, much more difficult for my mother. to have to deal with going up every single weekend, and this is look after her, we'll look after him. But he persevered, he persevered for the family. He was an educator. His passion in life was teaching thousands upon thousands of students who were privileged to call themselves a student of Dr. Ekman and sit in his classroom. If somebody was smart, they can ask, how's Izzy doing in Brown? <laughs> or how's Benji doing in Seton Hall Law School? And that may help get them off a tangent a little bit and off the course matter and have a whole, whole hour discussing just what's going on with his sons and what's going on with them. My father was a articulate speaker. As we say, the pen is mightier than the sword. He was able to write and he was also a God, a God given ability to speak with his, with his accent and then sort of arising up to his, to his higher dialect as he, higher pitch, as he wanted to enforce his points. People used to sit spellbound. In the 70s, he used to speak every summer, one of three times a week to the hotels to give lectures and sell his books. And then in the 80s and 90s, and even into the 2000s, he was a featured speaker at the Pesach programs. A man who had a, 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 
a broadth of education, a knowledge that, that is, that is un unparalleled. I'd like to recall the story that happened when I was a an undergraduate at Brown University. My father could talk off the cuff. He didn't need to be prepared. He could speak at, at a matter of moment. He could speak about any topic, whether it's secular, whether it's religious, whether it's Martari, he was able to speak about anything. It happened to be that we were sitting with a group of observant Orthodox guys, fellow students at Brown University, one Sabbath afternoon, good men at the Meyer. My father got up to speak. And his favorite expression was, you're not a dime a dozen. I'm not a dime a dozen. Okay? He was trying to trying to praise the boys that were there, saying it's not easy to be Orthodox at Brown University. You need to persevere. I know it's hard to find a Jewish fatal, a Jewish woman, but you need to persevere. And ultimately, I'll help you find Shaduchim. About 25 years later from this incident, somebody came up to me and said, I still remember what your father said at that Shalashunas. That's the impact that Dr. Ekman had that my father had. My father was a tremendous Bob Stocker and Bob Chesed. Most generous person I ever met. No, no, no interest in materialism at all. He would be so happy just to be his little square, just his clothing, no interest in anything sophisticated or anything like that. Just as Dalit Amos and had no really interest in material matters. During the course of his Shadduchim, I do recall one person, I hope he married, but he was, he owned a suit, he owned a suit store. And if I recall, he, he, he custom tailored three suits for my father. And my father was so happy. He's not a person who usually was excited about clothing and so forth, but he had a, he had a special shaykh to this person and, 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 wore, and, wore the, and wore those suits with so much, with so much joy. Um, in terms of Tzaka, there, there's several family members he still was supporting and helping out in, in different ways based on their financial, financial assistance, even up until a year or two ago. Um, in terms of speaking, another incident that comes, my father was one who, who had very strong conviction. If, if something felt right, he would say it. He didn't care what other people thought. He would say what he thought. It wasn't arrogant. It, 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 was, it, was, a, it was a relief. It was a belief that I think, that I think was, 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 that, 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 that developed from his years in the Holocaust. He was able to tell right from wrong. There was a time in the late 70s, he gave a spoke at Giver's, he, he spoke at Giver's Hotel. He was talking about Henry Kissinger. And he was actually kind of critical about some of Henry Kissinger's attitude towards the Jews, particularly when it came to the Yom Kippur War. And he asked about in terms of the Soviet Union and so forth, with the repercussions of that. After the lecture, this elderly couple came up to my father and said, you know, we enjoyed your lecture. You made some very good points, but we just want to let you know we'd like to introduce ourselves. We're Henry Kissinger Paris. <laughs> but you made some good points. And that's the type of person my father was. He was able to get along with everybody, even Henry Kissinger's parents. Although my father had no biological brothers, he had an extended family. He had what we call Achim, a Chaver, a point to everybody. He felt a, a, a responsibility, as the rabbi said, to each and every person in terms of their welfare to be able to help them. He was able to do anybody, whether it was Shadduchim, or whether it was about work, or whether it was about how the kids are doing. You would make it feel like you were just one-on-one, -on -one, so spending the time to get to know you and spend time with you. My, my father was a problem solver. My, my other brother, one of my brothers, had a stomach issue when he was, at, was, when he was adolescent. This is before Google. This is before the internet. We had a medical book in the house. He looked it up. And made his diagnosis without even consulting with a doctor, and he was right. There's no question my father could have been an excellent physician. And I think that's why, in a way, some of his best friends were physicians. He had such friends that I think every discipline in medicine was taken care of. He probably had multiple doctors. I know I'm, I'm number three in dermatology. He had two other dermatologists, including his friend Victor. In terms of, in terms of, um, Tutoring, my father's money was no object. He, he didn't care about money. If we had problems with, we had problems with math in high school. He didn't call somebody from high school and wanted a teacher from high school. He hired the head of math at Kane College to come over once or twice a week and tutor us. Or he would get, 
the FAT teacher from his Solomon Schechter school and come and tutor us. He didn't care what it cost. It, it made no difference to him. Money meant nothing to him. When you have nothing, it doesn't matter. It's all from God's hand. That's how he saw things. Most generous man there ever was. When he met my mother, hard to believe, but my mother was not completely enthralled with the perspective at the moment. She had some yearnings in Israel and some other, other aspects that she was inclined to maybe pursue. But my father, if his head, if, he, if his mind was set to it, he was going to pursue it. But he needed an ally because my mother told her, my Uncle Joel, if a guy with an accent calls the house, tell him I'm not home. She wasn't really interested. But my father needed an ally. So who was going to use as an ally? He used his figure. He used his mother-in-law. My mother-in-law, my, my grandmother, my mother's mom, who was originally from Latvia, from Rimga, same where Rabbi Teitz was. And she spoke Yiddish. She understood where he was from. And he understood where she, he was from. And he helped, and she helped facilitate so that she can understand my mom that, you know, this might be something worth pursuing. He's a solid person. How did, how was my grandmother rewarded? Years later, when she took my father's course to Kane College for five years in a row, she got an angry start. <laughs> but she, she had a very strong relationship with my father. Finally, my father was a fighter. These last three months, he wanted to live so much. <laughs> he loved his children and he loved his grandchildren so much. Fortunately, he was alive this evening. He gave her to my, my daughter, Perry, to honor the Delphi and to welcome Avi into the family. And to accept them as one of our, as, as an activist, just, just as, as he did the other children and, 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 and the daughter in laws. And he was so excited to, at the chance to walk Barry down at the wedding, at the dance at her wedding. He's not meant to be, but I have to say, both Perry's law school applications, era, and I'm sure he calls himself, it gave him a whole new sense of energy. It gave him a whole new sense of life, which I hadn't seen since. He thought he applied to medical school. He was so involved in the process, keeping track. Where did she get in? Where did she want to go? <laughs> Again, a man who was in the rehab facility in Amora Hill, being able to, to recall this. At the, at seven hours, it's unbelievable. What am I? Mine was working so hard to believe. <laughs> Abba, you left us a tremendous legacy. Although it was a little too short, there's so much more to do and so much more to help people with. <laughs> Ten bucks. At least 40 shadokim. Countless students you taught. As I described earlier, as I quoted from Yushaya, the prophet described, his legacy like enlarges us to the, to the shoot, the royal scepter. He achieved so much. He's probably dealing with so many medical conditions, never complaining, always encouraging us to do the best that we can do, both myself, Ari, and Thank you. For our mother, you have, it is, uh, is unbelievable. I know how appreciated you told me how appreciated you were in terms of these last three months, how much mommy did for you, how much Ema did for you, just in terms of her coordinating all your medical care. She was really nice and style. You have left us strong roots to sprout from. You taught us to be strong and proud Jews and work hard and treat everyone in a civil and gentle fashion. Abba. Who beats the Nehechele and the Himmler? Mit dein Blavi, mit der Mama, und mit der Tata, und mit den drei Schwesters, the gods of Mishpacha. You're now back reunited with the Eppin family, with your mother and your father and your two sisters. <laughs> Please you know all your merit. <laughs> Bang on the shore of Shamaya on the doors of the heaven and let's stop this Vagefa. Please. To rest in peace. Mm -hmm. Rachel?
Shalom from Israel. Shalom from Israel. We are summoned today to bid to Eliezer Shmuel ben Aryeh Leib. He is leaving us in Olam Hazeh and headed directly to Olam Haba. I want to stress one thing. My father won. He played this game called life and came out victorious. He beat the Nazis, survived the brain tumor operation, conquered multiple medical ailments throughout his illustrious life, and each time he walked away as a champion. Lester Samuel Ekman was born August 7, 1937, to Ari Leib and Chaya Ekman in Ilya, Poland. He was their only son, the only brother to his sisters, Sima, Faye, and Toby, of blessed memory. That family survived the horrors of the Holocaust and created a new life in the United States. My father claims he was the only surviving boy from that town of Ilya. They immigrated to Chelsea, Massachusetts, where he excelled in school. He would tell us that the only way he connected with his high school classmates was through baseball. Since he was not much of an athlete, he memorized statistics of key baseball Red Sox, Boston Red Sox players, such as Ted Williams and Johnny Pesky. My father continued to study. It got him out of Massachusetts and into New York. He studied at Columbia and NYU and obtained several academic degrees along the way. When Rabbi Barry Schwartz introduced him to at a co-ed YU Chagiga, he was immediately smitten. They married a short time later and ultimately moved to Elizabeth, New Jersey. My father loved the European feel that Rabbi Pinchas Tights created. He enjoyed speaking Yiddish with his friends from the old country. I publicly want to I want to thank the families in Elizabeth and Hillside who financially supported my father's academic endeavors, specifically writing books. It comforts me to know that the children and grandchildren of these families are also supporting the Judaic Research Institute. Another time was different for us than most kids. We did not go to the beach, camp, or bungalow colonies. Instead, three times a week, Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday, we would visit three separate hotels per day. Browns, Concord, Kutcher's, Neverly, Fallsview, Granite, Pineview, Tamarack, and the Homewack. My mother would be the driver, my dad the lecturer, and the three boys the schleppers of the books. <laughs> At these hotels and sell his books. He would, he would always take us away for Pesach. Not to the Pesach programs people are familiar with today, Instead, he would be the guest lecturer at hotels like Mount Airy Lodge, Paramount Hotel, and Echo Hotel. Those years, we would wake up late, daven, and magically, Matzah Bray would be in front of our hotel room. This past Pesach, I also woke up at 9 a.m. each day, daven, and Matzah Bray would be waiting for me at my kitchen table. Thank you, Naomi. My father loved to talk baseball and medicine with my brothers. With me, it was politics and not just politics, but Israeli politics. He used to tell me that this politician is no goddamn good, and this one is for the birds. I suggested if he moved to Israel, he would be able to effectuate change by voting in at least three separate elections all in one year. It is a shame he passed before an Israeli government has been formed. He wrote so many books, but certainly the top three were the book about the Chafetz Chaim. He earned his PhD from Sala Baron, the famous historian. When he wrote his second book, the book about Menachem Begin, he was invited to attend Camp David. I recall years later studying Israeli political systems at Hebrew University during my college years. One day on a visit to the Knesset, I presented Benny Begin with my father's book written about his father, Menachem Begin. It was one of those, damn, that was a cool moment. <laughs> Lastly, the book about the Belsky brothers. These partisans single-handedly saved thousands of Jewish lives in the forest during war World War II. When this story was ultimately converted into a movie named Defiance many years later, I asked my father why he never added a love story to the plot and sell it as a motion picture to Hollywood. He said, because I'm an academic, not a playwright. There were many parts of his life that he cherished. His beloved Susan, or Susie as he would put it, 
we know how much he relied on you driving to and from, being his Asia Tchayel. When you reach the milestone of 50, when you reach a milestone of 55 years of marriage, that is absolutely remarkable. We know how much you sacrificed to make Abba comfortable and the steps you took to provide for his every need. You are truly an inspiration. We wish you continue, continued good health and know that we are all here for you. Many former rabbis and educators at the JSC commented over the years how my parents, our parents, raised three boys, all from <laughs> professionals. They asked us what the secret was. There is no magic formula. My father knew every grade we ever got, was involved in all of our studies, and made sure we never quit. <laughs> Turo College. I must publicly thank the deans, fellow educators, and staff at Turo College who embraced my father into their family. Bernard Lander, of blessed memory, treated my father like a son. Shuduchim. I often wondered why my father was so involved slash consumed with this. It finally hit me recently. The Nazis used to separate children from their mothers. My father needed to reverse that. <clears throat> he had a quest to have as many Jewish children born as possible. He never spoke evil of any person who was single. Instead, he was overly interested in their lives. His famous catchphrase when describing a person he was setting up was, he or she is top notch. Grandchildren. He loved all of his grandchildren, but related best with his older ones. He loved talking Bialik with Brad, advising Terry on different life paths, attending the Tano's basketball game at JC, and hearing Akiva and Eitan play Israeli music in Vacation Village. Doctors. Boy, did he love doctors. <laughs> to those that cared for him, to those that he tried to make a shit of. If you were a doctor, you could do no wrong. And if you went to or were going to Harvard Medical School, that's the top prize. Family was paramount to him. Before we made Aliyah, we made him a 70th birthday party. I can still see the smile on his face when all the grandchildren sang Oi from Pripachik in Yiddish. What happiness. When we made him a surprise 50th anniversary party for my parents years later, all the children, spouses, and grandchildren attended. The joy he had watching his entire family as Chazim Olivani sang Jewish songs was priceless. Nothing made him happier than when my kids called him Arab Shabbos and thanked him for buying ice cream at the Shilat Pool. It was his mission to give in big ways and small. I must acknowledge and thank my brothers and their families for all the efforts and honor they showed my parents since we moved to Israel. My parents used to come to us for Chagim and Shabbat, but Izzy and Robin and Ari and Achama have really stepped up in our absence. There is not enough praise I can give to Ari and Izzy for all the medical assistance and guidance you provided these last several months. Ari, your connections at Trinitas Hospital were invaluable and the staff treated Abba with honor and dignity. He was so proud that you were a doctor at that hospital. And whenever a nurse or doctor would enter his room, he would ask if they knew Dr. Ari Ekman. I wanna publicly thank all the doctors, nurses, aides, and other medical professionals who either personally cared for my father or were consulted on his case. He deeply valued your opinions and cherished your insights. You are the special people in this global pandemic. If one were to ask what are the three best qualities that define my father, it would be persistence, acquiring knowledge, and generosity. Persistence. Even after Naomi agreed to marry me, he kept convincing her what a great guy I was. <laughs> he never gave up. He, was he always had to create, to learn, to write, to grade exams. Wasting, his wasting time was not in his DNA. Knowledge. I vividly recall Zahava's bat mitzvah. After giving words of bracha to Zahava and the other guests in fluent Hebrew, 
My brother-in-law Perry commented how impressed he was with Hebrew. My father learned Hebrew years earlier in the displaced person camp after the war. Generosity. When neighbors, friends, relatives needed money for any particular purpose, my father was there to help. He found housing for young orphans and widowers when landlords did not want small children in their apartment buildings. He found jobs for Russians and Israelis who had recently moved to the Elizabeth community. Winston Churchill once said that we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Boy, what a life my father led. It is only natural to be sad when a hero, it is only natural to be sad when a hero such as my father passes. But we must accept the blessings that God bestows upon us, both in life and in death. We are so thankful that despite his multiple ailments, he did not suffer and was generally pain-free. I want to share with you what I told Zahava shortly after hearing the news of his passing Wednesday night. Naturally, Zahava was upset. We sat in her room and agreed that it is okay to be sad. We sat in her room and agreed that it is okay to be sad because Zadie is no longer with us. But we must look at all of his accomplishments during life. Look at what he has done written books, educated thousands, raised three Shomer Shabbat boys who are married to three lovely daughters-in-law, had the schutz of seeing many Jewish grandchildren learning Torah, both in America and in Eretz Israel. And we must look to the root from where all this came. It is one man. My father, my hero! <laughs> <laughs> as we try to understand and make sense about the world around us and we try to figure out why people are isolated schools closed flights canceled economies collapsing I find myself asking one simple question <laughs> I find myself asking, why is my father buried with just a minion? Why can't I be at his funeral? Why is he meritorious to be buried with a minion while his boyhood friends from Ilya did not have the same good fortune? I do not know the answers to all these questions, but when we frame the questions this way, it gives us different perspective and it allows us to appreciate what we have and what we just lost. Lastly, I wish to publicly apologize to my father for multiple times. <clears throat> that I have been abrupt and didn't treat you with the proper respect. I am truly sorry and ask for your forgiveness. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. It's always been difficult to follow in my brother's footsteps, and today is no different. Come up with words. You mean? Because of the rabbi said, it's still Nisan, and it's still Isruchag, the day after Pesach here in America. I'd like to just give a tribute to outline the tremendous accomplishments that my father, Professor Lester Ekman, achieved during his lifetime. My father was indeed a unique and special person who impacted so many people in his life. He was a scholar. As was mentioned, he achieved seven academic degrees. He spoke seven languages. He studied at Harvard, Columbia, NYU, and he received his PhD from the world-renowned historian Salah Baron. He wrote 13 books, 
including one just two years ago at the age of 80. He was still writing. He was a full professor at Turo College. He had a Jewish history chair endowed in his honor at Turo College. And in 2018, he was an honoree of the Distinguished Worldwide Humanitarian Award. He was so proud of this award. When I would visit him at home, he would take out this enormous book where, the, where there was a biography about my father for this award. Now with a twinkle in his eye, he would ask me, Ari, do you know anyone else who received this honor? <laughs> my father was a learner. He loved learning Gemara. Every Shabbos afternoon, there would be a Gemara in his hand. He couldn't wait until Saturday night to hear the Dafa Shavua from Rabbi Pinchas Heitz, the Hanat Sadiq Lebracha. My father learned all of Tanakh, Mishnah Torah, and many Mesechtas of Gemara. He was so proud of the fact that Izzy and I made a Siyam on Shas and that Benji started this cycle of the Dafiyomi. He enjoyed formulating new chidushim of Torah to share at Smachot, at the Shabbat's or Yontif table. And he also enjoyed hearing pulpit speeches by tremendous Tamidei Chachamim who came up with original thoughts and original ideas. My father was a fighter. He survived the Holocaust by fleeing through the forest in Siberia. He overcame typhus as a child. He survived the brain tumor operation in 1982 and bacterial meningitis. And in 2007, he survived sepsis. He had a tremendous will to live. His whole existence was around one common goal the continuity of the Jewish people. My father felt this was the greatest victory over Hitler. Recently, he shared this idea with me. This past January, 2020, it was his first semester in over 60 years that he was not teaching. 60 years of teaching people. He was actually determined to teach until he was 90 years old. He didn't quite make it, but he came very close. My father was a visionary. He moved to Elizabeth because he fully believed in living in a community with the Yeshiva Day School for his children to learn. As a Zionist, my father had tremendous vision to buy an apartment in Israel a cousin of ours in 1972 in Israel said, please buy an apartment in French Hill, Givat Sarfati. My parents, but specifically my father, said this is a great idea, sight unseen. Never even saw the apartment, bought it, and it took them four years before they had enough money to actually go visit the apartment. In 1985, my father and mother purchased a home in Vacation Village thinking it would be a very nice place for a family to vacation. My parents still have their home there 35 years later. My father was personable. He was able to connect, as Rabbi Herman said, with so many different people, young, old, American, foreigners, non-Jewish, Jewish, reform, conservative, orthodox, ultra-orthodox, unaffiliated, it didn't matter. He loved people. He was the bridge connecting the European Jews to the American Jews. He spoke Yiddish, so the European immigrants gravitated towards him. And he was fully part of the American culture. He absolutely loved America. He loved this country. He felt it was the land of opportunity. He always said, where else could a boy from Poland survive the Holocaust and be able to study at Harvard and Columbia? He was so indebted to America for giving him so many incredible opportunities. My father was able to talk to businessmen about business, to talk to doctors about medicine, and to talk Torah with the rabbis. 
and of course his passion, Shadokim, setting up singles. See, my father would go around speaking about Jewish history and trying to sell his books in the tri-state area, including the Catskills. And as a result, he met so many people and he started to match them up. He made Baruch Hashem so many Shadokim and so many Jewish children were born as a result of his tireless acts of chesed. And never once, never once did he charge anything. I could hardly recall a conversation with my father, and we spoke very often, where he didn't mention one of his shidduchim, either that was shidduch that he made or a shidduch that he was continuously trying to make. It gave him true pleasure to help the singles find the mate. My father was generous, the most generous man I ever met. He literally would give you the shirt off his back. He helped out so many people, family members, friends, congregants, neighbors, even strangers. He used to bring chocolate to the doctor's offices to give to the secretaries and the nurses because he knew they liked it. Often when he came to visit or I came to visit him, he would open his wallet. There were two 20s and a 10 in there. He said, Ari, take the two 20s. I said, but Abba, you won't be left with anything. He goes, it's okay. Go out for dinner and enjoy. One time he gave Nechama a hundred dollars just to say the Madish Tana and Yiddish. One minute, Madish Tana and Yiddish, a hundred dollars. He gave his grandchildren money as a reward for excellent report cards. And of course, he always gave of his time. My father was caring. He loved my mother so much. He loved how outgoing she is. They made a great pair for 55 years. He had tremendous love for his three sons and his daughters-in-law. And of course he loved, he loved his 13 grandchildren. My father was a role model. He demanded excellence in the classroom he set the standard and the expectations in our house. He stressed, and I mean, he stressed education. And he stressed having a skill. His three sons needed a skill. He had an unbelievable work ethic. He often juggled three jobs, waking up at five in the morning to accomplish those jobs, just to educate his three sons. And for me personally, his love of the medical field and the tremendous way he spoke about his doctors very much influenced my decision to become a physician. My father was a great father. He was a person I could always rely on. He guided me on difficult decisions throughout my life. He was a peacemaker among the family members, always stressing Shalom Bias. He's a person I love talking to about our mutual interests and hobbies. And he was a person I loved so much. And I know he loved me more than I could ever have hoped for. He was a wonderful, wonderful father. The world has lost a wonderful human being. He will now go back to his family in Shemayim who have missed him for so long. We thank you, Hashem, for giving us the opportunity to know him and love him. My father has a legacy that will live on for a very, very long time. He was a true mensch. So we're going to begin with the Kabula. Uh, you can take the shovel and verse three times. Back backwards, right?
Abba, I want to ask the Fila from you. Especially the last three months, I was making enormous, enormous decisions on your health. And I hope, I hope you won't know me if I did anything that caused you pain. It was not intentional. And always, always we had your best interest. And you're... And I really, really, really hope you both of me for everything that may have happened, especially while you were so sick.
Have your concentration. Line to 
line facing each other for the Arvedim to pass through. Obviously, spread yourselves out across from one another along this path over here. And only the Arvedim will pass through. Thank you for the opportunity for us to say a Kaddish during this trying and difficult time. Thank you for coming.